Okay, hey everybody, welcome to our 70th video. Well, it's probably not that many. How many is it? I don't know. Hey, we're gonna teach you how to play, to make fried chicken the Mike's Place way. I mean, this was a big item we did during COVID where at one point I thought we were a chicken house. So I'm gonna explain how we do our chicken. And the hat's because old men should not be walking in the woods and hitting their heads on uh, limbs. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and also I am wearing a Mike's Place shirt, which you can't see because, there you go, Mike's Place. We got some great shirts. I like that one. I gotta get you some. You know, I like that shirt. Okay guys, so what we're gonna start right here, Doug, I wanna tell you real quick. I brine this chicken overnight. Okay. And when you brine it, you want your water where you season with kosher salt to taste as salty as the ocean, maybe a little bit more. So then you just put all the chicken in there. And if you notice, you see how it's got that blood color? Yeah. It sort of drains it. And then what I do is I pour it into a colander. Okay. Like this to let it drain. Okay, everybody. This is my breading station. I have the meat draining here, the poultry. What I'm gonna do is there's no guessing on the flour. Flour is pretty cheap. I just make sure I have plenty. So that would be a handful and a half. Something like that. Now here's this. This is eggs. Y'all gotta learn how to do eggs like this. Am I gonna do that today or not? Mm. Uh, I think we'll. <laughs> For safety's sake, I'll do them. See? One handed. That's the way to do it, Doug. You got to do that by next time. Right. And I add water. Okay. Okay. And here I have one. It's, it's, the portions are two to one. It's one portion of white breadcrumbs. All right, white breadcrumbs. Two portions of panko. Panko. Depending on how much chicken you have, okay? So now what we want to do is I'm going to. Take a fork, and I'm gonna whip this up. You wanna really get it all blended together. It's too thick without a little bit of water. You know, so water is probably about one egg's worth. So it's like a three to one ratio. Okay, Dad? Okay, so now we're gonna start our breading cycle. I'm gonna do the first piece, and then I want you to do the next piece. All right. Here it is, what I do is I really like, oh, oh, I forgot one part. I like to put a little bit of pepper in. Ooh. Just like the kernel. In the flour. Yeah, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. You never have enough salt. Mix it all up. Okay, and then what I do, see, I like to push it in all the nicks and crannies. So you get it. See? See, that's where the practice comes in. Yeah. Or the amount of times yeah. <clears throat> you've done this. And then what I do is I put this into the water egg mixture. Let's let it drip a bit. And then I add it to the mixed up panko, panko and white breadcrumb mixture, okay? All right. What we do is, I like to just press it on. And so then what I do is I put it here, because this is gonna be the overnight procedure, okay? It's gonna sit overnight and turn into a batter. You ready to try, Doug? Oh yeah. Okay. Here we go. Somebody's calling, Mike. IRS. IRS. I know who you are. I'm the bread guy. <laughs> I'm just bread and chicken, sir. The number you have reached is not Nobody's there. Jeez. Please check the number. All right, here's a bigger piece. That's, that's, that's cheating. That's cheating? Yeah. This yeah. one? Yeah, now remember, I popped the bone on the thigh. I don't know how to do that. I forget. I already popped it, so you're oh, good. Okay, that's good. So we're going to get down in here. Yep. Deep. Get it deep. Wow, you got a Cleveland Browns hat. You're still a believer. I am. See, I said something on social media. Let's speed this process up. Hey, Doug, here's that chicken that we did yesterday. I bred it. I like to leave it at least one night in the cooler because what happens is it absorbs all the juice and it almost makes like a batter. Okay. Okay? So yeah. instead of just putting a dry product down, right. I always cover it. 
you know. Okay. So now what we're going to do, very carefully. Now, how hot is this? I hot. have this at about 275 right now. Okay. And this breast is massive. Oh, it is. So we're just going to put it all in here. Boy, that's a lot of chicken. I hope this thing will cook it. <laughs> it's not like the restaurant. No. So, Doug, we're just going to let that sit in there, and we're going to cook it, you know, for till it's done. We want 165. Okay. Okay? All right. Mike, I had to ask, what are we using to fry this in? Doug, we're using a vegetable fryer oil, or you okay. could use a soybean oil. Okay. Uh, since this is really a Serbian Barberton-style chicken with a little edge to it, uh, Back in the day, it used to be cooked in, in beef lard. Okay. And let me tell you, there's nothing like beef lard for for cooking this and for cooking french fries. Ooh. I mean, once you try it, you're gonna love it. So so what we're doing, I, I bumped the temperature up a little bit, everyone, because I did put too much chicken in there. So it's up at about 300 degrees. Remember, we wanna get an internal temperature of at least 165. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna just let this go a little longer, Doug, and We'll come back and show you how the finished product is. Where are we at now, Mike? Hey, Doug, this is starting to look pretty good. Yeah. The thing everyone has to worry about, depending on how much chicken you put in, it can take a lot longer. So yeah. the big thing you want to make sure is that it's golden brown and you get an internal temperature of 165. Okay. And you had a question on something? Yeah, when you were uh, preparing the chicken, you were popping. What were you doing? Okay, what the... I do is I pop the bone from the thigh out of the socket. Okay. Because it cooks it better. So that's why you do it? Right. Okay. So Doug, what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna take the smaller pieces out. Because I'm pretty sure these are looking pretty good. Oh yeah, those look great. And this is the, this is the thigh, here's the, there's the wing. Well, I'm thinking that's looking good, Doug. The only thing I worry about is the is the breast because it's so big. Gotcha. Okay, so we're gonna look at the internal temperature. You can see right here, Doug. We're getting it's climbing. And remember, there's always a little residual heat. So if you pull something out, maybe five or six degrees ahead of time, you usually have a ten degree rise. Okay. okay? There we are. We're at we're at the right temperature. Okay, Doug. Gotcha. And this is floating now, so oh, boy, that's looking good. That's a big one there. That's a big one. That's the one you want to get in your six piece or <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a that's a that's a hunk of chicken right there. A hunk of hunk of burning chicken. Oh my gosh, I almost touched it with my hands. That's as big as the whole fryer. Right. Nice. Yeah, I would definitely try for smaller pieces of chicken, but this is Mike's place size, and everything is big at Mike's place. Okay? All right. What do you think, Mike? I'm a, I love dark meat. I've always been a dark meat I'm kind just going to try this little guy, you know, since I'm on a diet. Sounds good. <laughs> and I'm going to take this one out for a friend of mine. Holy smokes. Named Mike. Oh, okay. Should I try it real quick? Check it out. All right, let me try it. Yeah. I, I could see myself eating a few of those. My friend said he wanted a thigh. Oh, who's your friend, Mike? <laughs> I'm not talking about it. <laughs> you like it? It's great. Remember, it's so much better with uh, beef lard, but... That's the unhealthy thing right now. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anything unhealthy. Well, this thanks. is good. Thanks yep. for coming over, Doug. How <laughs> do you like the chicken? It's good. <laughs> it's good? All right. Success. <laughs>